Okay. Again, good morning and welcome. I'm so hopeful that you all were able to be energized and properly grounded by our land acknowledgement ceremony, especially cultivated by the hands here at North Carolina Black Alliance and coalition with other partners, members, indigenous tribes, Native American tribes to make sure that we were grounding again, equity and opening this summit in an appropriate and cultural healing way. So if you weren't able to drop in the chat, we have enabled the chat uh, before I go into just kind of uh, the introduction of grounding and connecting the dots, right? We're, and we're going to deepen that as we go in in the journey of community together of deepening the, the dots between environmental injustices and of course access to healthcare. But before we do that, we've enabled the chat. So if you were able to participate in the land acknowledgement exercise, visiting that link that was previously on the screen and you saw the name, right? the original name of the land in which you occupy now that you live on, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, also, please use the chat for any questions, um, just feedback. So we love, love in the chat. I love being able to read comments as I present and go forward and being able to shout out um, folks who are dropping just their thoughts and expressions in the chat. So again, thank you for being with us. And so now that we are journeying into the official, right, part educational component of our summit, today is going to be packed with policy information, uh, faith leaders, and how we are stewards of the earth. We'll get to that as we journey. But before we do, we are going to ground an introduction to environmental injustices and healthcare and how the two intersect and intertwine. And we're going to be ground together in a shared analysis so that we can move forward empowered with the information we need to catalyze, mobilize, and then transform our communities. So welcome to the ER. And I hope folks um, can see see my screen. And if you can, you may be on a cellular device, but there will be a PowerPoint that I'm going to walk forward in my comments, but it's called Welcome to the ER. All right. So we're very familiar with the ER and many black and brown communities. We oftentimes, especially rural areas, we lack primary physicians, be it because lack of access to health care options or the fact that in rural communities, sometimes the miles, um, the distance it takes to get to a doctor's office, it's sometimes e is easier to access the emergency room as our primary physician, our primary doctor. So we have titled this section, Welcome to the ER, because it stands for Environmental Racism. So welcome to the ER. Now, as we're talking about what does it mean, environmental racism, I want to do my own land acknowledgement and give honor to my people, my ancestors. Um, these are the original and Afro-Indigenous folks that were the creators among the kingdom of the happy land. And if folks have heard me speak before, if not, please look up the Kingdom of the Happy Land. It was a, a post-emancipation settlement, um, but it was also a settlement that pre-established, predated the transatlantic slave trade here in America in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. And it was a kingdom and the only US kingdom second to Hawaii that was established in the United States, had two kings and a queen. And so I wanna give honor to my beginnings, where I come from and my people as an Afro-Indigenous woman, um, and just wanna give honor before we go into the information and education today. Um, and say, so when we talk about environmental injustices, we have to say, as we're talking about environmental justice, we're looking for the justice, right? But we have to say, okay, where did it begin? Where did these intersection of uh, cumulative impact, we hear these words, but what does that mean? Where did the burden of dirty water, the burden of dirty air, the burden of corporations come? Well, it happened and it started, the atrocities of environmental racism began before the proclamation of freedom. This happened during, again, the genocide of native folks. And it happened during the enslavement of Afro-Indigenous folks and the enslavement of folks who were brought from Africa, again, to make up what we know as a slave trade. So before the proclamation of freedom is actually when environmental racism took its hold as dirty roots. So we're oftentimes told that there is only one type of plantation. We hear this in media, we hear this in, in, in public news that oftentimes our people, our ancestors, it is, we're referred to as only being folks who pulled the cotton, who pulled and harvested the tobacco crops, the agriculture plantation. But what's not often told or depicted is that once that crop was harvested, there was still enslaved peoples who had to forcibly manufacture and produce those crops, right? So you had freed, uh, uh, in, you know, freed uh, folks eventually, but before the freedom came, they had to work on agriculture plantations, industrial plantations, service plantations, and there's several others. But it's really important that when we look at the industrial plantation, there were such things as the textile mills, ironworks, tobacco factories, shipyards, roads, railroads. Sounds familiar, right? 
service plantations. We still had cooks. We were enslaved, so we were forced to be housemaids, blacksmiths, weavers. Why am I making this delineation of saying industrial versus service? Is because we hear about these corporations today, the corporations that don't offer access to health care, these corporations that don't prioritize uh, our people to make sure that we were protected in COVID-19 when it very first hit. It, these same corporations that don't pay a living wage and still pay slave wages, as we call it, guess what? Those corporation models was birthed out of the plantation models, the industrial plantation, the service plantation, and the agriculture plantation. Right. What we also see is when we talk about environmental injustice is the fact that corporations, we call them dirty corporations, they emit pollution. Many people may have heard the term carbon emissions. Well, that just simply means dirty air that is contaminated and made dirty by these corporations. They spew out pollutants. They spew out chemicals and it creates, again, unsafe, unclean air. Uh, it, it contaminates our water, it contaminates our land, and carbon emissions is responsible for, of course, what we're seeing is heat index, so historic uh, heat waves, where we're seeing her historic hurricanes. This is the responsibility and the fault of these corporations, but here's what's important. That corporation model and carbon emissions actually began in slavery because it was an economic vehicle that profiteered from enslaved people and profiteer from this plantation model to actually start what we know as America. The funding, guess what, came from the plantation model. Now, when I say funding, how, how, what do I mean? That enslaved labor and plantation extraction that created carbon emissions that, again, remove soil from the land that hurt our people, how is it profited, right? So it'll tell us there's a study that is called the stock of slaves. Now, I am very clear that I will never call my people slaves. I always say they were enslaved. That is a state of being, not who they were as human beings, right? But this analysis, this study tracked 55 years of, again, the remaining 55 years of slavery before emancipation. This is not the total, right? Several hundred years, just the last 55. Now, bear with me. One million, it was studied and calculated that one million enslaved people in 1805 were valued at $1 million. But in 55 years, 4 million enslaved peoples were worth close to $3 billion. Mm. So this capitalistic extraction of people and the land is what actually gave the financial and economic bedrock to actually create and found America as an institution. We had the most millionaires in the South because of the slave trade. We had the most millionaires in Texas because of the slave trade. And guess what? The value of capital invested in enslaved people roughly equal the total value of all farmland and farm buildings in the South. So our oppression was tied to the land because not only was the worth of the people sold, not just our labor, but our value as literal stock equaled farmland and equaled the buildings, the plantations. Therefore, the land was oppressed at the same time that we were oppressed as a people, right? We see the entrenchment of systemic barriers that was an outgrowth of slavery. When I talk about plantations to the corporation model, when I talk about the agricultural system, the industrial, the service plantations outgrew from their black codes and inequitable policies that entrenched these plantations becoming corporations that are still emitting dirty pollution and causing again, historic earthquakes, historic heat, historic hurricanes and other impactment, urban heat islands, food insecurity, the outgrowth in a in addition to that was the impact on our people in the penal system. Black codes was developed to punish our people and to put us back into prison, back into an enslaved state, even post-emancipation. So we see the intersection of now uh, health care and the fact that we were rendered and made sick due to these environmental uh, contaminated plantations that became corporations. And now it's tied to this polluting economy that was the bedrock of America because extracting us and extracting the land is what provided the resources to create this nation. So today is not a new state of being that we are fighting against carbon emissions. Today is not a new fight that we are fighting for environmental justice. It was started at the, as the bedrock of the institution of this nation. So we are fighting legacy environmental racism. So as I wind down, let me stop here.
When we say welcome to the ER, welcome to the emergency room, we know that in America, specifically in North Carolina, that we are 80% rural. Rural, 80 rural counties in North Carolina. In those rural counties, we had the highest disparities during COVID-19 with over 87% of Black and Latino workers that were franchised and fast food workers died from COVID-19 because of the lack of relief. This is the same corporate model that was birthed from those plantation models. When we talk about the lack of access to health care and the fact that over half a million people lost health care due to the pandemic, it's because our infrastructures, our state budget wasn't actually in place to remediate and overhaul these systems of inequities. When we talk about exposure to lead, exposure to radon, exposure to chemical contaminants, likened to the environmental justice movement of 1982 that we are celebrating today as the legacy makers, when we talk about exposure to those contaminants, that creates the diseases in our communities or it exacerbates it makes it worse. So then we wonder why our people are dealing with high rates of asthma. It's because exposure to dirty air. We wonder why we're dealing with bronchial and lung diseases and cancer. It's exposure to chemicals that have been dumped into our waterways since slavery and has not stopped because policies support corporations dumping in our communities and being in our communities. It is all intertwined. When we realize that even today's corporations, the dirtiest of the corporations, the corporations who do not treat our people fairly, are also located in the former Jim Crow era segregation lines. We realize that the maps used over and over again, be it for, again, Jim Crow era segregation that impacts housing, to even how our voting and gerrymandering determines where we vote, the same lines are used to entrench corporations, disenfranchise our people so we can't vote our way into proper representation, and then we are rendered sick and ill because our land, our water, our air is poisoned. That is the intersection. And as we move forward today, in the next sessions, we will talk about what and how we can mobilize and move forward and ground even policy analysis. But I thank you for being with us today as we talk about at a deeper lens how we can make sure to fight back against these corporations that are using our homes and lands as dumping grounds, right? but also how we as a people can make sure that we are supporting one another with mutual aid and resiliency to understand that this targeted and intentionality of dumping in our home has been this way as a legacy of America, especially when we know over 56% of all people of color live only two miles away from a toxic hazardous waste site. That is not by accident, it is by intention. So as we wind down together, and I see folks are dropping in the chat land acknowledgements, um, I just appreciate, please continue. I, I, I'm very excited and very, very whole in this moment to see how folks are giving honor to, again, the original lands. When we talk about the United States, when we talk about North Carolina, we must understand that still nearly half of the United States, our individual states still hold the indigenous original names. So please continue to drop in the chat as we transition to a community public announcement with key important facts and information. And then we're gonna jump right into our first panel for today. All right, stay tuned. 